if you're looking for a camper van, at the Camping and Caravanning Club we'd normally suggest you look for a conversion that's NCC approved, or by a converter who holds certain certification standards. They might be part of Ford's Qualified Vehicle Modifier programme, for example, or the Volkswagen Motorhome Qualification Scheme. But the campers that come through schemes like that tend to all look very similar and you might be looking for something different. But whatever you buy or convert yourself, it's vital to end up with a vehicle that's as safe as possible. I'm here today to have a chat with someone who's been converting some slightly unusual vehicles into campers recently to find out how Max McMurdo makes sure everything is safe for the road and the campsite. I think safety is overlooked by so many people doing self-builds and there's so many elements to safety as well. I'm really fortunate I've got a fixed bulkhead between the cab where I travel and where the rest of the stuff travels so if there was an impact or an accident at least I have that as a safety barrier. I think not just weight, that is important, but weight distribution, putting the weight too high up in the vehicle. So I've got no lockers up around the top area. I wanted to keep all the weight down low. Um, so I used to be a car designer, so that was all something that we were taught about. And then overall weight, of course, I've used lightweight aluminium because that's an incredibly lightweight and robust material. I also wanted to be as electric as possible. So big solar panel on the roof, that feeds into a lithium power pack, and that provides all of the power for the heating, and the hot water and entertainment and things. So there's like there's Wi-Fi, it's all voice activated. So lots of tech, which actually also doubles up as making the place a lot safer. I did give in and went for a gas hob though, because cooking on gas is so much more efficient in other ways and it's much more fun. But I've also got a pizza oven and a barbecue, which I take outside. Because actually when you're outdoors camping, you want to cook outside where possible. You've got some quite high voltages there though. Yes, I didn't want to play around with electrics too much, which again you sometimes see on the internet and it puts the fear into me. Didn't want to play around with that, so I bought an off-the-shelf system, so it comes in a big metal box. It's all within there, all pre-wired, all done and signed off by somebody more competent than I, and all I had to do was plug in some Anderson connectors. So again, I didn't want to dabble with high-voltage electrics. How did you work out the gas then? How does that sit? The gas, I just went to my friend who's an automotive engineer. He runs a big workshop and we did that together. He signed it off at the end and just made sure that the gas bottle was strapped down and you could turn it off and isolate it quite easily. I didn't want a big gas bottle rattling around in a locker out of sight, so that all lives underneath there. So I am slightly concerned about those knives behind you. And rightly so, actually. It's, it's a, a weird concept, isn't it, to travel along with knives, but they're on a magnet, so they've never actually budged. But I should probably take them down when in transit, but I mean, nobody travels in the back, do they? 